What's up, guys? My name is Edwin, and today I'll be your host for the Tetharic Show. And today we are we are on episode four, and we are going to be talking about body positivity. So today we have Asia Danella, hi, Avinash, what's up, and Mr. Single or Group Red. <laughs> hi. <laughs> so body positivity. So body positivity is a social movement initially created to empower and popularize large-bodied women and men, while also challenging the ways in which society presents and views the physical body. The movement advocates the acceptance of all bodies regardless of physical ability, size, gender, race, or appearance. So let's start off with our first question today. As Malaysians, how well informed are you guys about body positivity? Avi. You're up first. Okay, so um, I've never actually taken body positivity to how to say it. It's I like I've never actually focused a lot of this issue, and it's it's not something that is uh, commonly being discussed uh, among any of our group of friends or anything. Mm. So I would say, how well informed am I on a on a personal level? I would say I'm informed. As if I have awareness that it exists, but I'm not. I'm not actually that familiar with um, all the you know all the points, the arguments of you know all the people trying to bring forth this movement to Malaysia and you know around the world. Yeah, so I'm kind of informed in the sense that I know it exists. I'm not uh, that sure about you know how how far has this movement, you know, gotten? I mean, uh, we'll surely dive down into a bit of the examples, you know, later. Mm. So, yeah, I think that'll be, like, it for me. So, you get the general concept of what... Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So, how about you, Aisha? Um, well, I, I would say I'm pretty well informed. Like, per, on a personal level, I'm pretty well informed because I am on social media a lot, especially on Twitter. It's a thing that that is pretty trending in a sense. It's a movement that I've been well informed of for a few years. I think like a year before this, two years before this. So well, Quite a while. Yeah, quite a while. It, it's been going on for like decades, but only... No, I'm, I'm serious. It, it has been going on for like a decade or so, especially like um, a, f- a few of the campaigns that have been like popularized over the world that supports body positivity like Dove, you know? So I, I've been following it. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm not a big advocate for it. I don't really talk about it to people, but I do follow the news, the campaigns and all. So yeah, that's for me. Mm, so I think from the group, you might be the most experienced to talk about this subject. Oh, <laughs> don't pressure me. <laughs> I think you can agree on that, right? Yeah. yeah. Think so. This conversation is riding on Asia's back. Yeah. Let's still ask Avi first, though. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, Mr. Single, how about you? Okay. Uh, <laughs> body positivity among Malaysians. I think uh, most Malaysians will talk about body pos- body positivity uh, on social media. You know, like Twitter and Instagram. But then, uh, when it comes to real life conversations, we never really talk about it. Yeah, that's right. So I think, <clears throat> I think we are aware about it, like uh, we are uh, aware about pos- body positivity, the movement and all, but then we don't actually uh, engage in a face-to-face conversation, uh, mm-hmm. mostly only on social media. So I think that would be my answer to that question. Mm. Mm, so, so you're fairly, more of... fairly aware about it. The personal personal level, I'm fairly aware about it on social media. Mm. Oh. Right, so uh, it can be concluded that Asia is the most experienced. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, no, okay, you're not the most experienced. I'm, I'm like, I'm like Mr. Single here. I'm, <laughs> I know I'm aware of it on social media. I do follow it, but when it comes to face-to-face conversations, it's never really being brought up unless you're talking to a group of friends that are also aware of it in a no sense. I right, understood. Okay, so let's move on to our second question for the day. So, what are your opinions about the body positivity? Uh, let's start with you, Aisha. <laughs> Looks like all the questions starting with me today. <laughs> uh, my opinion on body positivity, I think it's a really good movement because right now, like in 20, we're 2021 right now, actually. Yeah. In 2021, 
compared to before this movement got popularized and uh, followed by so many people, um, generally for women, it is very hard for us to be positive about ourselves because when, uh, yeah, for example, maybe when I was 13, 14, almost like a decade ago, uh, this body positivity thing, it wasn't really popular, especially in Malaysia. Fat shaming is still at large or even skinny shaming is still at large. And I feel like when this movement started coming in, it, it had such a great, not, not a very big impact, but it made me aware that like, why should I be ashamed of my own body? You know, I, th I think this movement is really good if it's more like uh, made, uh, if, if Malaysians are more made aware of this movement, because I feel like right now there's less fat shaming, but there's still like, you know, Malaysians, when we see something we want to like uh, talk about, it's just like, oh, this guy's fat or this guy is like, you're, you're, who are you to say this? You're like this size, you're that size, something like that. So picking on each other, is it? Yeah, yeah. The way we, uh, the way we pick on each other is generally like straight to the person's physical attributes, which I think is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Oh, uh, understood. So to summarize what you said, it's mostly positive, like yeah, yeah. positive on your opinions. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do, I do agree with it. I do, I do think that it is uh impactful on people, especially those who are entering like adulthood. Teenage years, you know? Teenage years and adulthood? No, th yeah. like those who are entering adulthood, like when you're approaching adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get what I mean, right? Uh, when they get older. Yeah. yeah, when they get older. Uh, okay. okay. Well, that's an opinion. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, what about you, G? Yeah, uh, I think this body positive, uh, positivity movement is a good thing, actually. Um, it helps uh, elevate our self-confidence, right? Mm. Like some people, they have like a stretch marks or bodies, like scars and all that. And sometimes they feel like less confident because of their um, appearance, right? Mm. And I think this movement shows us that uh, we should focus on more, like more non-physical futures, you know, instead of uh, just uh, our bodies. So I think it's a good movement. Uh, that's a bad side to it, but then we'll talk about it later, I guess. <laughs> there is. They're mostly, mostly positive. So, all right. All right, so how about you, Avi? The last two has been positive. Um, hmm. My opinions, right? Hmm, this, this is, uh, there's a lot of things that you can say about body positivity movement. La. So, I think the first thing is, body positivity, I think it comes down a lot towards accepting uh, who you are in that particular state. And it doesn't mean that you have to stay in that particular state mm. and you can actually, you know, you can continue. Moving. Well, body positivity is, I it, it actually comes down to a lot of your own self-acceptance. Whether if, let's say, you know, because I don't, I don't only consider you to be fat as, uh, as you know, you should accept yourself. You know, I also, I also do consider, you know, the other end of the spectrum where, you know, you know, like uh, people who go, who go through, you know, steroids to, you know, pump their muscles up all the way. You, you know, those really oversized, yeah, like yeah, really yeah. scary looking and unnatural thing. Yeah. 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 In, in that sense, body positivity is something that I would say it lives in the moment but you should always uh, move towards getting better health for your own self. It's always health Sorry. over the self. This body positivity thing is more of a it's more of a psychology thing compared to a physical state of being. Yes, it's about accepting that humans have a lot of body varieties, but uh, we have to understand that there is there is ways that we can change, but only on a health stance. Because I do understand, like I have a friend, quite uh, quite plus sized. Reasons why she can't actually, you know, lose weight or anything, is because she has a skin disorder, whereby if she sweats, she will get, you know, she uh, her skin will kind of uh, inflame, right? So it's it's also a situation like that. So 
it the acceptance part also has to relate and understanding people on a deeper level not only on a surface level because this is body positivity a, a thing why you know fat shaming and all this you know this uh you know calling people names and this and stuff and all of this and this like it's more of a first impressions thing mm. the thing that it, it drills down deep into everyone is more of a first impressions and oh what will this person think what will that person think and also what does other people think of uh the particular person or the or the victim lah so in a sense that um what 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 is it that I wanted to say yeah huh? i kind of lost my words halfway <laughs> we, yeah, we, yeah, so, we got okay. you the positive yeah, so it's it's not exactly 100% positive that it's not it's actually actually 100% negative it's i'm more 50-50 because because when you talk about uh first impressions right or you know uh people's first impressions on you if you have first impressions on someone and you tend to judge them um uh, it's more of what uh, it's like when you judge someone it's more of you are actually uh neglecting the fact of what can be rather what is mm. so you are uh, it's like you are actually putting aside reality and living in your own mental space so in i give you another example like you know uh i'm pretty uh not exactly plus size lah but you know i have kind of a that ish body and pretty sure everyone knows me knows that we but accept you a lot of a lot of uh, like in a sense that i have i can easily walk uh very very far and when i go with people who do that and i join them at first they laugh at me because uh they don't think that i can you know complete uh running or walking because even though i'm at this size I still can perform a uh, pretty hardcore activity to a certain extent. Not not uh, like extreme like you know jumping off a cliff that my body can do it. So it's so in a sense that I still can. I if you want me, I pretty sure you guys know that I walk to Paris Maju. Yeah. With po. Yeah, yeah, that that is me easy. Once. What? Six, yeah, even you came along right? Yeah? So I was tired. <laughs> It was, it was what Insane. five, six, seven. It's about I think it was six or seven kilometers. Yeah. Yeah, to and fro. So I easily did that without, not exactly breaking a sweat, but I didn't feel tired because it's uh it's more about the first impression. So that is kind of what it is to me. Mm. It's more of we should eradicate first impressions. That's the first thing. That's the first level of it, and we should be more acceptance to there is a lot of body types, and that's what I think it's all about. Hmm. So is it a more neutral perspective about body positivity or a more positive in your like slightly like, positive movement slightly, I'm slightly positive. positive yeah 70% like a bit about more than neutral 70%. always percentages with avi <laughs> <laughs> always the statistics you know <laughs> all right then avi thanks for your view about uh, thanks for your opinion about positive body positivity so i think let's move on to the next question all right who do you think benefits from this movement movements and what uh, uh sorry 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 who benefits from this movements and if you have first hand experience could you tell us about it okay let's start off with g yeah, uh, yeah. i think Mr. single yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay i think uh, most mostly um people with very low confidence right people with uh people who have issues with their bodies right like uh, people who are facing uh how to say body shaming you know in a sense mm. that they are uh, they are huge in size or maybe they're too skinny mm. or maybe they have like scars on their body so it makes them like uh, feel um less confident when they go out and they meet people so this body uh, body positivity thing actually helps them to boost confidence right like like i said it's not about only the uh, physical futures right we need to focus on the non physical futures and i think i think that's about it like they help people with less confident mm. boost their confidence level mm. what was that the question again uh do you have any personal experience like after What's, looking at this movement maybe you could right? relate to something uh i think i can relate me because like, right now uh <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> kind of kind of fat and i uh, think uh, you're not fat a bit, a bit a bit a bit i'm fat a bit right now because of um, cmco <laughs> 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 the virus 
<laughs> I've been eating a lot, you know, uh, very less okay. movement. I think everyone is like that. Or is it just me? I think it's just me. <laughs> no, I think it's everyone. I think can all yeah, very less in some movement, way. right? So, mm-hmm. like, I have very less movement, so there's not much activity to be done. Um, I'm always on the laptop every day, so, and I still eat the same amount of food every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, I put on some weight, and uh, I think this positive, body positivity thing kind of related to me because right now I'm feeling very uh, no confident to go out you know after a long time if I go out like oh what are people oh. going to think about me you know I'm like very fat right now oh. so yeah cool. personally personally I can relate to it right now yeah oh just the... damn <laughs> we think you're cool G come okay, on we love you Listen, G if you are single Um, <laughs> to I think I think I can accept myself right now. <laughs> yeah, don't be insecure, man. Everyone gain to it. Yeah. All right. How about you, Abi? What? Who do you think benefits from this? And if you have any personal experience, you could share with us. Um. Yeah. I think I think generally I'm pretty much on the same page with what G has to say. But I, for me, it's I would lean more towards you know self acceptance as general. Like I I do know a lot of people. Who barely can accept how they look. Um, that actually comes down to what uh, stereotypes are. So you know, uh, like you know, the Korean beauty, unrealistic beauty, beauty yeah, yeah, standards, yeah. and all that. Yeah. In that sense, if you think that is beauty, that's uh, and that is very hard to achieve. And to be honest, everyone in a K-pop band looks pretty much the same. I'm not. I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Our next topic will be K-pop and racism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, at times, right? They they literally look the same because they have the same makeup. They have the same makeup. Yeah, same makeup, same look, which I do not mind. But if you want to keep that as a standard, I think that's a big problem because um, on a, on a term, you know what G was saying earlier about you know you're afraid if someone would judge you. So, because I'm a person who has been living with this kind of judgment for very, very long, uh, from my parents all the way to grandparents to, you know, all that. In, in an Indian family, you would know, like, that Indian people can, of course, relate, you know, your aunts, your uncles, all of this. Yeah, yeah, all of these things would actually, uh, would actually impact me. So, I'm kind of at a point where I just do not, like, I really do not uh, care anymore about what people have to say. And I've I've fully accepted that if I am like this, uh, I am like this. If I want to lose that and shed that extra pounds of weight, it's more of I is I want to do it for myself. I don't want to do it for someone else because that is, like that is not me. For me, if I if let's say okay now I would say I could barely run five kilometers. So if I want to go around the full marathon, yeah, that is time for me to do something about it because I want to do it. So do something for more. For yourself, rather than trying to impress society, because you will lose yourself trying to impress someone else, because you're going away from your original nature, and that's kind of what I would want to say. Damn! From someone who has a lot to say about this body positivity thing, and from someone who doesn't like take any crap from their family members and anyone in general, I'm actually surprised you only supported like 65% of this body positivity, Avi. <laughs> <are> we? <laughs> well, the thing is, right? The thing is, is I I support this move. I support this movement because on a on on a basis that a lot of people have trouble accepting themselves. So for on a really on a on a level of on a personal level, I wouldn't say I can relate to this movement because I have already reached the state where I've already accepted what it is. Compared to a lot of people who are still struggling with the first stage of acceptance, you know, you know the saying right? If you want to change, you got to know what is it in the now for you to change towards uh, what you want to be. So it kind of plays along that line. Where you got to accept it. Body positivity movement helps a lot of people accept what it is, but not the final outcome. It isn't the final outcome because if they want to change for the better, it is all about acceptance. It is what it is, and that if we have to do whatever we can to change what we want to change, and if you do not want to change, it's not an issue. So it's it it it's it, it's more of an acceptance basis, not not only about uh what is this. 
yeah, you want to be fat, you want to be thin, you want to be, you know, Korean Buddhist, or whatever. Yeah, I'm not into that. I'm more into the acceptance part because a lot of people have actually failed on the first step of self-improvement. Oh. Oh. Abi, you're going to make me cry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure all of us can relate, right? It's a very you're personal topic. Cry. <laughs> Don't cry, Isha. <laughs> we love so, you. Right, so from the sound of it, it looks like you're ahead of the movement. You've, you've, like, you've come to realize <laughs> about everything before the movement uh, became popular. Yeah, well, that's it's not a new movement. It's the Avi movement. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting, Avi. All right, Isha, how about you? What do you think? Uh, uh, who benefits from this movement? And do you have any personal experience regarding uh, this movement? Damn, Abby, you're gonna make me cry someday <laughs> because of what you said. Um, I think personally, I feel like those who benefit the most are women because left, right, front, back, we're just getting shamed here and there, no matter what we do. And I feel like the thing that we're mostly getting shamed I about think is men, men face the same thing too. Yeah, oh, yeah, but but like I, <laughs> I'm not saying that men can face the same thing, but like, oh, but like for me, for me, because I am a woman, I feel like uh, we have been a target of this fat shaming, skinny shaming thing for so long that when this movement came, I feel like it's so much nicer to see my Instagram feed being filled with people of different sizes and accepting who they are rather than people trying to be what they're not, which was before this movement became popular. So so I I can tell like a personal experience. I don't want to go so personal, but like I, I think Avi knows. I, I've known Avi more than I've known Edwin and G. And I think Avi knows that at some point I absolutely hated how I look. Like I hate mas- I hated myself. Like I came to Avi and be like, I really don't like how I look and all that. Like my my face or my hair or my body, just everything in general, my personality and all. And it became even worse because I am like on social media and um, I've just, my feed is just filled with like people, like pretty people, you know, like really nice looking people, models or something like that, that just made me feel even worse than I, than I already do. And that was like a few years back. I'm, I'm okay now. I'm okay now, guys. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm so okay viable. now. Uh, yeah. So basically, this uh, when this body positivity movement became popular, uh, not just in Malaysia, but like globally the past few years, uh, seeing campaigns that involve women of various sizes, uh, pr- like campaigns that I love that promote women of various sizes and and also like, my Instagram feed being filled with people just not being ashamed of who they who they are and what they look like. I feel like that really helped me in a way that, like, I, I kind of stopped comparing myself to that. I'd be like, I'm, I'm fine the way I am. I'm fine. Like, that was, like, my... Like Avi said, like, this movement helped me... Somewhat helped me get through the first stage of acceptance. Like, just, just liking... For me, my first stage of acceptance was just being okay with the way I look or being okay with the way I... Uh, the how much I weigh or how my body look like, yeah, like that. <laughs> so you're saying, uh, people who are not okay benefits like, who, yeah. who doesn't fit the uh, yeah who you... doesn't fit the norm of, uh, of like fashion I guess of like the the it look like, uh, women who aren't skinny <laughs> I would say yeah because I'm I'm not skinny i'm like between skinny and somewhat uh chubby because i'm tall also and i find my i find it hard for me to fit into um these like norms of how i should look like Like after cmco everyone gained weight right when i came back home after university like left and right my family just said oh you got fatter or you got chubby or you need to lose weight yes. they wanted me to lose about 10 kilograms when i'm perfectly happy with how much i weigh and how i look yeah, so like that. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> just like I feel you exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah same, same thing here. Yeah. Nah, well, that's weight, a cheer Lose that weight, yeah. So right. basically, you joined the Avi movement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, joined the Avi movement. You know, you know, on another, on, on another note, love. I also know people who are still not actually, you know, like what I said earlier, have not actually gained that that phase of acceptance. Same like what Asia, because I do know someone 
who was facing what Asia used to face currently, like right now, like right in this instant, because of the fact, I mean, one, one of it, I, as you said, it benefits women. Yes, I like that fact because, um, you know, from, from a historical perspective, yeah. um, from what we know, women always love to look pretty. That is the nature of being a woman. Yeah, so whatever you do, you can never fight this nature whereby women want to look pretty. Yeah, the thing happens is what is because because of social media, because okay, example right. If you're living in in, in a long house, Asia, right? Your comparison would be only <laughs> with people in the long house. I couldn't think you of another demographic. Just have to use the long one. house only because I'm from Strawa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, it's okay. No, Embrace no. the culture. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Okay, so on, on a side, you wouldn't be able to compare with much of what you have. Like, because the internet is so vast, you can instantly connect to people over there. That's why this yeah. comparison has grown so wide. Yeah. And we need more of this thing where this is the normal of how people look. And I, I know there's a lot of this this movement. I'm pretty sure it's all over the place on TikTok, Instagram, yeah, Twitter, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, so like people who promote body positivity in a sense that, you know, being too skinny isn't that good, being too this one. Because I, I recently stumbled upon a TikTok where uh, people were saying, I want to look like you when I was, uh, when I'm a mom. So this woman was uh, very, very, you know, like she was very, I wouldn't say slim, la. like she was, she was, uh, uh, not exactly fit she was thick but very very thin so apparently she had a divorce about uh, i think two or three years ago which caused her to lose a lot of her weight and she said that she's not actually fit she still has all those belly rolls and all that stuff and this is stuff that has to be normalized and well yeah Aisha, what you said you have to accept it it is what it yeah, is yeah damn a lot of a lot of views, huh? <laughs> right, but it's most positive. Mm-hmm. All right then. Um, okay, so our next our next question will be the opposite. What drawbacks come from this movement? Like, what is the line of accepting one's own body? So I can start off as an example, uh, such as some people who are let's say plus size or large, they, because of this movement, they accept themselves, but... They stay I, that way. But I, yes, but they stay, and they stay that way, but I generally don't think that's a good idea because we, in my view, we, we shame those people to get skinnier. Well, shame those people to get skinnier because <laughs> it's healthier. They, won't, uh, they might be happy, but then they're only going to be happy for the next 10 years before they go yeah. six feet under. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so, okay, okay. Uh, okay. It's pretty deep down okay, there. We'll clarify what he's saying. In a so, bit. what are the drawbacks of this movement? You think? Let's start with G. Yeah. Um, drawbacks. I would say, um, from a health perspective, right? Mm. Um, body positivity, like they actually like promote that. Oh, you are okay with your body. You should be. You should accept how you look. Okay, let's say if you're obese, right? Mm. It's a good thing that you... Okay, it's a good thing that... <laughs> is it a good thing? No, no, wait, wait. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> chill, it's, a good, chill. it's a good thing that you accept how you look, right? Okay, let's say uh, in obese, you're like, um, I don't know, 150 kgs, right? Okay, it's a good thing you accept how you look, but is it really good for your health? I mean, mm. obesity, right? It's not actually a very good thing for you to support i think <clears throat> like yeah. obviously leads to a lot of uh, health problems you know like heart attack you can have diabetes you can have like high cholesterol a lot of things so i think from a health perspective it's actually not helping from a from a confidence level sure it helps right but then health health perspective it doesn't help that much and i think another bad thing about it is that uh uh <laughs> I, I, it's totally a health thing, right? Uh, yeah. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, that's, I think that's it. I think it's only about the health department, right? Because people really uh, accept how they look, like obese or not. They don't really care that, oh, people accept me, so I'm just going to stay like this. I'm not going to try to make myself better. I'm not going to try to make myself uh, live a healthier lifestyle, you know? 
So I think that's the only part I think I, I can think that's a drawback about this movement. Mm, so it's more to the oh, like the perspective. So, yeah. Uh, so, like, once you're satisfied, you don't want to push yourself to be a better version of yourself. Yeah, but when you can actually become a better version of yourself, yeah. Okay, understood. All right, how about you, Aisha? What do you feel about the drawbacks uh, of this movement? I think for my first opinion, I agree with G. I think there is an extent to where body positivity should go. Like, if you, it's okay to accept your body, like, like G said, if you're obese, it's okay to accept your body as it is, but I still think you should um, work towards a healthier lifestyle. And it, it's not just like obese people, maybe like underweight people as well, something like that. So, so I, I don't, I don't want to uh, repeat what G said because I, I actually agree with his points. But I think the second thing that I don't like about this movement is there are some people who are so about this movement. They're so into this movement that they force it onto other people who are not ready to accept this movement. Because in terms of uh, people with mental health issues, in terms of their body issues like uh, body dysmorphia or anorexia, some of those people, they're just not ready for people who are so about this movement to go like you should accept you for yourself for who you are because it doesn't work that way for people who have issues like that so yeah so basically like um i feel like it's a it's a good movement to an extent i don't want you to be like obese and be like i'm okay with your body uh, i'm okay with my body but I, i'm just gonna keep it this way until like i uh, until i feel like changing because i feel like if you are if you are in a, a if you have a body that is in state of something that will lead to a uh, health condition in the long run, I feel like you should start uh, improving yourself immediately. But and I also don't like the fact that uh, people who are so like pro body positivity to to like force it onto people who aren't ready for it. I think it's okay to promote body po positivity, like talk about it to people. But there are some people, maybe in America, I'm not sure in Malaysia, but maybe in America that are just like all about it. Like, I'm just gonna, like, you, body positive, you, you should accept yourself for who you are. I don't care if you're fat or not, you should accept yourself for who you are. Like, except things like that I don't really agree with. Mm, so I Understood. think I'll, I'll add another thing. I think uh, another bad thing about it is that uh, the big companies are actually actually exploiting mm. this, um, right, 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 this right. movement, right? Like, all these years, the big companies are, let's say, like the... Victoria's uh, Secret or something Victoria's like that. Victoria's Secret, yeah. yeah. Not any, mostly any brand, fashion right? companies. Mostly fashion company had had been uh, promoting uh, uh, how the how a person should look, right? Yeah. In a different way, like skinny, a, white, skinny, blonde, yeah. blue-eyed. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. How an average American would look, okay? Yeah. So when this body body positivity um, movement actually blew up, right? And suddenly all of them are like, oh, uh, you're not supposed to look like this. And then they have suddenly they hire big, uh, what do you call, plus size models yeah. for the campaigns. And it was all of a sudden, right? It's just to, just yeah. for them to ride on the bandwagon so that they can promote their products yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. everyone. I, so I think I, they are exploiting. That's the bad part also. Yeah, that's true. I, I think it's fine for them to prom to start promoting body positivity. But yeah. there are some brands that just like, as soon as it came out, as soon as it became popular, they completely shift their opinion yeah. on what kind of model they should hire for their shows or for their fashion line, something like that. So basically, they they were uh, shoving shoving down like, oh, uh, this is how you look for so many years, and then suddenly this movement became so popular, they just changed this is how you look. Yeah, you, this, <laughs> this is how you can look, right? This is how you're supposed to look. Okay, yeah. this is. Uh, the difference after and before we knew about the body uh, positivity movement. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's the bad thing also. Exploitation of this movement by the big companies. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say any brands. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> they sue us on Spotify. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, all, right, all right, then. Uh, how about you, Avi? What do you think is the drawbacks from this movement? To be very honest, I think that Asia and G have already mentioned majority of it. So maybe I'll just, you know, retouch what is it all about. It's more on, there is a fine line between your acceptance and your general well-being. So in my, like in my case, I may, I may have a dad bod, but I can still, I can still do physical stuff. 
So it's not for you to judge what I can do. It's more of you knowing me and I know that I can do this kind of stuff. So on a health basis, uh, that would become a totally different topic whereby we uh, general health should be also promoted. So let's go. Let's promote the Abhi movement. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, just, 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 just a you know, yeah, bad yeah. joke. Lah. But, but yeah, the thing is, there is a fine line between your, you accepting yourself and your general health. Both is important. One on a psychological state. One more is more on a physical state because your health is physical. Your acceptance is uh, mental. Both of these are important. But the body positivity movement has already moved in a more psychological state. So maybe in the future, we should add more emphasis towards how it should be in a physical state. Not to promote that, you know, bodies, a fit body should look like this, but to promote health in general. Because like, uh, cardio, like your cardiovascular health, that is very important. And, you know, heart attacks is a major cause of death. We're not asking humans to live forever. But you want to, you if you want to die, you should let the, your soul, you know, naturally leave the body, not because of a sudden cause. <laughs> That's a way to put it. <laughs> wow. So, an extension to this question for all of you guys to answer. It's up to you any order. What do you guys like? Just like, just give a short uh, opinion about plus size pageants. Plus size. Pages. Oh. Yes. Some. That's the first time I've heard about it. Yeah, that, that is the first time I heard about it. Uh, so it's... you beauty pageants with plus size models, is it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so large fat people. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you think about it? Do you think it's a good <laughs> idea to, <laughs> to push people, like uh... show kids, like, oh, it's okay to be this large? Something. What, what is your think... opinion about it? I think that depends on the requirements for people to enter. If it's plus size in a way that it's still not obese, and you, yeah, if it's still not obese, but you are like, like you are chubby, I think it's fine. I think it's uh, I I think it's a, an okay thing. But if it's if the requirement is don't matter what size you are as long as you're above this weight then I think that's a problem. I don't think we should promote obesity, but promoting uh, the fact that you don't have to be skinny, like Asian, like Asian stereotype skinny, you know? Like, it's fine. Something like that. That's why I feel about it. I think same thing. Uh, if it's about, uh, like, if the models are a bit chubby, or, mm. like, a bit uh, larger than usual size, right? Is it okay to say that? I have no. Yeah, it's probably, uh, <laughs> on, on a topic of body positivity, yeah. it's acceptable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if it's more about uh, like promoting people with obesity, I think it's not a good thing. If it's about uh, promoting showing. like okay, uh, showing that oh you're okay with uh, a bit of a chubby body or a larger body, mm. then it's okay. But if it promotes obesity, then I don't think uh, <clears throat> it's okay, lah. But I think there's a, I have like one, maybe one problem, even if they don't, uh, I feel like, is there a plus size pageant in Malaysia? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Oh, all right. I, I, really I feel like subject. in a country, in a country where body positivity isn't fully accepted, in the sense that we're still fat shaming people, whatever they do, you, this guy, like, sorry, <laughs> like, of course he's doing that because he's like fat. You know, this is typical Malaysian, like, banter, okay. that's what Australians people say. So I feel like in a country like Malaysia, this kind of pageant uh, is like, I, I would advise them to not do it. Because it it's still, fit, yeah, fit it, it's so. like in your face, Malaysians, it's not a good thing. I feel like it's better to introduce uh, small things, like maybe bringing in campaigns with larger size people instead of shoving into people's face like larger people's in like swimsuits or evening wears or something like that. Mm, right. Avi, you have any opinions about it or? Um, we're running short on time. Next question. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is going to be the last. Two it questions. Why did the question? <laughs> <laughs> so, why is body like why is the body positive positivity movement more focuses more on fat people instead of people who have amputees or disabilities or people with Ooh. scars? Like, why is it more to fat people yeah, that they can change <laughs> their body shape? You know. 
So Avi. since Avi may have deferred the question, <laughs> I'll put it on you. <laughs> and he will be the only one answering this question. No, no, no. You are answering. <laughs> I had something to say. It's just that your know, time is running out. All right. So um, why why do we focus more on fat people? Because of the way industry puts it, it's. It's generally, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good question. To be very honest, I didn't think of it. <laughs> like, I, I, was just, I was actually shocked at the question in the sense that, yeah, wait, why why didn't we do this? Like, you know, if someone doesn't have a hand or a leg, why, why didn't we do this? So I, I really feel that because um, we are only focusing on what we deem as normal people, mm. not people with disabilities, and um, like you know, in in Olympics and all that, where all the, you know the Paralympics, where these people are special disability people. Yeah, so they still do achieve in in, in that sense, right? We still do allow them to compete among, but we only allow them to compete among themselves. Mm-hmm. So I think that the world isn't actually ready for you know getting these uh, like people with this like amputees you know people okay you coming into this body positivity but i think it's a very good suggestion that we can actually mm. you know hopefully someone you know goes into this field and listens to this podcast and you know get inspired yeah, it, is, it is it is it could be something that is done the reason why it's only focused on fat people is because uh one they are they are the people who i would say affected most because we have already disregarded these amputees, okay, you wow. in a totally different category. Yeah. Yeah. We did not even consider yeah. them. So I think it is about time we also bring these people and let them feel normal. Even though I wouldn't, I, cause I wouldn't want to say they are normal because their needs are special. But I think as uh, you know, as a developed society, we can of course do much better to cater for their needs and treat everyone as one because. We are all bound by the same laws of nature and eventually we will die. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What, what, That's what an ending. Wait, wait, keep, yeah. Depends on the timing though. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that would be it on my end. Uh, so how about you, G? So I think uh, this focuses more on fat people because um, like Avi said, right? Um, people with special uh, abilities, they are already separated into a different group and when it comes to body positivity it's either you're you're too fat or you're too skinny and a big percentage of it are people who are fat right mm. so i think that is why we are always focused more on like oh big uh, like big people or plus size people and uh, fat people i think that is why we are more focused on uh, that spectrum of the pos- body positivity like we have we have uh, people talking about the scars and accepting the scars but it's not it's not <clears throat> it's not really as big as uh, being uh, overweight i think yeah but I think don't you think they because you never change. actually understood like yeah, what yeah, these yeah. people have to think mm. we've I mean, never it, de- we've never dwelled into what they feel we've only been thinking of what we feel so that is something that I think we have to work on because I have no answer to this question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, I have an answer. That's my answer, but it's not. Uh, I don't think it's hundred percent correct. Mm. It's just my opinion, right? And what was your question, just now, uh, Edwin? Like, why do they focus on fat people that they actually can change to become a, a not fat person, as compared to an amputee who can't regrow an arm? Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> when you put it that, that way. <laughs> Yeah, Blood, uh, huh? <laughs> yeah. I uh, I think that uh, comes down to uh, personal mm. preference, right? Some people they want to lose weight because um, they want to be more healthier. Some people they're like, oh no, it's okay. I'm I'm fine the way I am, right? You know. So it's really a uh, personal preference, I guess. I'm not really sure how to answer that question. <laughs> mm. Right? That's how about you? Answer. Oh, understood. Understood, G. Uh, how about you, Isha? Uh, I think for this case, it's more in terms of uh, social media or what's uh, what's more marketable for like companies to show. So mm. it's like it's like for this movement, when you like 
search up the hashtag or something, you don't really see amputees or or OKU people using that hashtag to like show that they are okay with how they look. Usually, it's always uh, regular sized people that are not skinny or, or too skinny people or obese people or fat people. So it, it is really in terms of how, like the reason why amputees or okay or these people with disabilities don't really get the attention with this uh, movement is because they're like they're getting uh overlooked by the amount yeah. of people that are using that are like larger than usual you know? i think i think because we can't relate to them like we can always yeah, yeah maybe yeah you can always grow from skinny to fat but we it's a very uh, low chance that you can like lose your arm, lose an arm you know, your leg, like it's that. Very, yeah. Yeah. And and you don't you don't see like chance. big companies that are doing uh, body positivity movement right now in their campaigns, uh, promoting also body positivity in people with disabilities or uh, yeah am- amputees. Mm. I I see some local brands in Malaysia use uh, people with disabilities like in their face like mm-hmm. there are there are local brands i don't want to name brands so we, we might get sued but like <laughs> yeah but there there are people who use it there it's just like because there are such a small percentage of the people used for this movement so that's why they're not really known mm. so it's more to the general like, there's more like plus yeah. size people so yeah more yeah, yeah. yeah more exposure uh, for people who aren't amputees or those who have like scars or disabilities all right, all right. Understood, guys. So for our final question for today, for today's episode, is after everything we've discussed for the last 40, 45 to 50 minutes, do you think this movement is more beneficial or detrimental towards the individuals? Mm. So let's start with Asia. Oh, okay. Um, I think it depends on how the individual takes the concept of that movement. Personally, for me, I think it's beneficial because uh, it helped me on a personal level accept who I am and how I look like. So that's that's my answer. It depends on the individual, how they see the movement as. If they feel like the movement is pushing them too much uh, to the point where it's hard for them to accept, like you're, you're already pushing the concept of body positivity on them, but they have like issues that they just can't accept about themselves, that it might make their condition worse but personally for me i feel like it was uh it was beneficial mm. I understood so that's one beneficial uh avi what do you think about the topic we talked about today honestly okay if you want to ask me what i thought about the topic i think it was a very deep topic that we covered i think a lot of us were able to relate to it that's what i thought but would okay. i say it's beneficial uh, absolutely beneficial, but as you know, as humans, this movement has a lot of things that can be improved on. Mm. So, like you know, like what what when I was you know like baffled when you said about you know OKUs and PTs and uh, dis- mm. people with disabilities. Yeah, that's something we can always improve on. And you know, like what I said earlier about you know the health health part of that that entire spectrum. So these are things that this movement could actually use, but. Um, I'm not sure whether uh, about the implementation, whether we should or not, because it has worked for some people like, you know, Asia right here. So it is something, <laughs> it's a system that works, right? The current system works. So whether or not we need to improve it or, uh, you know, replace it, that's a different, it, that's something that is very, very debatable. Because if something works, don't challenge it that much. Because if, if, if let's say we challenge it, we need to propose another mechanism in order to replace whatever that is, you know, currently helping and holding society together. But I think it's still, we still can improve it because this is a relatively, not, 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 uh, it, this, this body positivity movement is not a, a system that has been in human society for ages, like, you know, the marriage institution or something like that. It has been, it's just something that has been quite, uh, newly introduced, so I think there's always room for improvement. But yes, it is. I would say it is very beneficial. Is that there's a lot of things that we as a generation would need to work on. Mm, wow, that's two out of three for beneficial. So uh, how about you, G, the last guy? I'm gonna be the tiebreaker, right? <laughs> tiebreaker. There's no tiebreaker. <laughs> <There's> no tie-breaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say it's uh, kind of beneficial to a certain point, right? Like I said, uh, it's beneficial if you're if you're very low 
low, like a low confident person. Uh, it helps you uh, boost your confidence. It helps you. It helps you accept how you look. It helps you accept you as a person. But when it uh, when you look to the uh, health health spectrum, right? Uh, if you're obese and you accept that you're obese and you're not working to make yourself healthy, then I think that is a problem. That is a bad mm. thing about this movement. Right, you are accepting that oh, it's okay. I'm I'm not healthy. It's okay. I'm obese. You know, it's okay if I get diabetes. It's okay if I get if I get heart attack or anything. It's okay if I die. <laughs> I I die. I I die with a heart attack. It's okay, right? Mm. So it's something. Uh, I think we should work on like something. Uh, mm. I said right. We should should many things uh, to improve. Yeah, many things to improve. Right. So I think it's beneficial to a certain point, mm. and then it just isn't beneficial after that. <laughs> <laughs> understood understood so i think i can conclude that it's beneficial for all of us which i agree also that it's beneficial i so i can conclude that it's beneficial for people who who don't fit the strict criteria of being so fit or like whatever those fashion models look like that to boost their confidence but i also agree that it's not a good thing for them for obese or plus size people to be okay with how they are so I think I can say that in the long run. Yeah, in the long run. Yeah. I can say that it, this movement is a positive movement. Yeah. Mostly like its name. Mostly mm. positive. Mostly, mostly positive. positive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So that wraps up our fourth episode for the Tetaric show oh. and if you guys still want to join uh, if you guys want to join our show next week, you could drop a link to, uh, you could Comment down below or hit up G's Instagram. <laughs> or if you guys have a suggestion of what topics you, to talk about next week, you could also drop down a comment down below. Okay. All right. See you guys next week. Bye. 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 Bye.